The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. There was a disturbing story the other day, not a Bronx story, it's true, about a dead baby found in the bag of a teenager. And for some in the Bronx, it underscored the relative lack of resources for prospective moms in the borough. The need for prenatal counseling and postpartum support is great, not to mention getting proper care during the birthing process. Adding to those concerns is the recent closing of the Labor and Delivery Nursery Neonatal Intensive Care Unit and Postpartum Services at North Central Bronx Hospital and moving them to Jacoby Medical Center. Advocates say this underscores a lack of understanding of the need for improved maternity care and more importantly, they say, it will jeopardize the well-being of moms and their babies. So we'll try to get our arms around the whole story tonight with a couple of experts. The phones are open and you can weigh in with your comments or questions by calling 718 960-7241, or you can send an email to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Uh, for tonight, though, uh, from the Association of Midwives, it's Pat Burkhart. Good evening. Thank you for Good joining evening, us. Good evening, Gary. Pleasure. And also the director of the Commission on the Public's Health System, Anthony Feliciano. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining Thank you. us. Mr. Feliciano, let's um, get through this, um, or at least start this complex discussion with maybe an evaluation of maternity care in the Bronx. How are we doing um, in our maternity care? How are our hospitals doing with all those ancillary services uh, in relation to other boroughs? So in the entire Bronx, I think it's gotten better in terms of maternity care. However, it's still a long way to go. And I think it's gotten better because of community-based organizations and services that have been provided particularly to the Infant Mortality Reduction Initiative and other um, organizations throughout the Bronx. What's going on is that we're still having high teenage pregnancy rates. We're still having uh, high rates of C-section, low birth weights. We're also having still infant mortality rates still higher than the rest of the city as a whole, mm -hmm. particularly in the Bronx. And, I, and it's particularly for low-income communities that call immigrant communities that that's occurring. And so there's also this uh, upward trend of also people accessing uh, maternity care, meaning having lack of access to it. Um, just, just the kinds of services that I was talking about. And not mean. even going to, uh, and when there are those services, not accessing them anyway as mm -hmm. well. And so there's a question about what's going on. Uh, let, let me ask you a couple things about what you said. Number one, how is it that um, community-based organizations are affecting uh, these issues? One would think it would be, you know, the resources that hospitals and other ha health providers uh, bring to bear. Well. When it comes to access to care and good quality of care, hospitals are, are trying to provide that. There's, there's concerns of how they're providing and what's going on with that. However, communities, particularly low-income communities, got, do not entrust just the hospital. They entrust the community-based organizations that they go to. Because they trust them almost better than the structures of the hospital. Yes. And so there are programs like the Infant Mortality Reduction Initiative, that's, uh, where organizations like Bronx Health Link and others who actually work towards improving outcomes when it comes to care around maternity care and infant care. Mm -hmm. All right, well, one final question and then we'll bring uh, Ms. Burkhart into uh, the dialogue. You know, the Bronx, and you both know, and we all know that the Bronx has just this remarkable healthcare system. We have just some of the most famous hospitals in the world. Why is it that we're in this situation that you say we're still not providing, when we talk about maternity care, some of the most fundamental types of care that, that uh, we would need? Why do we need community-based organizations to provide many of the public health 
uh, you know, uh, initiatives that um, you say they're, they're providing when we have these incredible medical institutions? Particularly now with the Affordable Care Act. The fact is that decisions that are made in terms of closings, mergers, the way delivery and coordination of services is done from a top-down approach. And so they're not involving communities nor staff unions that are actually providing those services in the decisions that are occurring around health care. So and you're saying they're corporate? Corporate. There's the issues of privatization and outsourcing. And so you need communities being part of the decision-making process. In order to do that, you also have to provide them accurate information of what's going on. And community-based organizations do that, but many times there is a lack of the indispensable role of those organizations and, and community members in terms of decision making. They're, they're not seated around the table. Correct. All right, uh, Ms. Burkhart, um, we'll, we'll ask you essentially the same question. What do you hear from uh, prospective moms and young moms uh, and new moms uh, when, it, when it comes to the types of care? Number one, what do they need and what are they getting in the Bronx? Well, they certainly need quality care, number one. They need ready access to that quality care. Um, and they need choices in that care. And one of the things that North Central Bronx critically contributed to that array of things that women would like to see is a choice. Uh, physician care, obstetrical care, by definition, is medical model. And medical model has its patterns and its uh, components. Midwifery care has a slightly different approach to the same care. Um, granted, if a woman has serious complications, then the medical model is probably most appropriate for her. That still does not negate the fact she sh should still have options to walk in labor if she wants to do that, still monitoring the baby, still monitoring her. So women should have options for the range of care that is appropriate for what's going on with her for that pregnancy and labor and birth. Then the, follow, the obvious follow-up question based on already what we're, we're talking about, and that is, do they have those options to uh, a, an adequate degree here in the borough of the Bronx? Um, I, I can only speak to that from knowing a fair number of the midwives who work in the hospitals in the Bronx. Um, and I would say not really. Most of the time, the medical model of care is imposed on midwives. So midwives in many hospitals become, quote, physician extenders. They, bec they, they, they are almost forced to practice as if they were a physician. Now, some places, like North Central Bronx, and to Jacoby to some degree, there is more... Um, liberty is the word I want to say, more flexibility, better said, so that, in fact, there are more choices available to women if they know to even ask for them, which is all another issue. A relationship between, and we'll, we'll let you, he, boy, oh boy, both of them have a lot to say, I can see. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, just taking a look at the relationship between uh, midwives and the hospitals. The hospitals say, yes, we're happy with providing the alternatives, we're happy with having you there, there are services we can't or don't provide, and therefore, um, you know, the midwives can't provide it? Or is there still kind of tension, you guys don't quite understand what we can do for women in this process? I, I think I would have to answer that question by stepping back a slight bit to say most hospitals, and certainly HHC hospitals, and Columbia Presbyterian, where I worked for years before I went to NYU, basically hired midwives to provide ambulatory care uh, because that's a very nice revenue generating piece of service that hospitals and OB departments provide. Uh, then midwives certainly were around to do labors and births, uh, but again, more in the medical model than the midwifery model. So many times it gets down to cost of provider, revenues generated, the bottom line of the hospital's books. Biggest problems that, um, or, or biggest uh, voids in the kinds of care. What, 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 is, what is it that you say, gee whiz, I'm seeing this again and again and again, it's not happening, we need to step up and provide it, when, I'm, when we're talking about maternity care. Right. Um, most critically, continuity of care in the ambulatory part, in the pregnancy part of care. Too often women go to sign up for pregnancy care, get enrolled in, you know, early enough that it makes sense, and then they come back for their next visit and they see a different provider, and they come back for their next visit and then they see a different provider. And that lack of continuity drives them away from, from services. For years we have looked at time, you know, uh, gestational age at first visit 
to define quality prenatal care. Nobody ever asked the next question, how many visits did you go back for before you delivered that baby? What, why, why do they not have continuity? Why do they have to see a different person? That's how the clinics are set up, which to me is a, a real puzzle. A real problem. All right, let's, let's get into this. And again, folks who want to weigh in on the subject can certainly call in. Um, Mr. Feliciano, um, in August, uh, it was announced, and, and it seemed to come all at once. It wasn't one of those things that was planned and uh, laid out, and, you know, step by step. It was announced that uh, NCB was going to be closing its uh, maternity ward and all those uh, services that I talked about at the beginning of the show. And, and I mentioned to you beforehand, many years ago, I did a news story over at uh, North Central Bronx. They were very proud of not only their maternity ward, but all of the other services, in fact, some of the ones that we just talked about uh, that they were providing. So for me, just, you know, as uh, an outsider, uh, I was surprised what, wow, this was supposedly one of the real, you know, uh, you know, jewels of the North Central Bronx system, and then all of a sudden it was closed. So what happened? Mind you, the staff, the unions, were only giving three days notice. Three days notice. Of the closing of the labor and delivery services. Mm -hmm. So the community had much less time to even know what was going on. And so it's, it's, it's critical because when we looked at CPHS, our organization, Commission on Public Health System, looked at hospitals that have closed in the past for the last uh, 12 years, mm -hmm. the first thing that was closed was the labor and delivery services. That was the pattern we've seen. Really? And so that triggered us um, working with the unions and the community to figure out if NCB was going to be an entire hospital closing. So you, you have fears, but you have not had no indication of this. No indication. We don't think so mm -hmm. um, because um, the, the situation and the matters are much different. Mm -hmm. um, however, we, we still have an issue how the decision was made, where yeah. they could have worked with the community and figure out what was going on. Th this was preventable. There was concerns at Jacoby Hospital mm -hmm. in terms of not having enough senior staff, also with issues of uh, patient safety, with particularly for mothers and children, infants. And they decided to take the senior staff and effective evidence-based programs that were going on in North Central Bronx and move them over to Jacoby. And why did they choose to do that from your perspective? Was this a cost-saving uh, measure? There, is this an efficiency measure? Health and Health Accord says it's not a cost-saving measure. What they told the state in order to get this, what they call, in quotation, suspension of labor and delivery services at NCB was a patient safety issue. What we're saying is, fine, we understand patient safety, and that's very important, but you had m over two years to try to prevent this, where there were unions having conversations with the health and the administration of central office of HAC and with the network, what they call the North Central Bronx Network, which includes Jacoby mm -hmm. and North Central Bronx in these conversations. And so we are thinking that it's basically a move, like always that HAC does, is when they're planning to plan and not be, and being short-sighted about what's going on. So, so what's the problem? Uh, uh, Jacoby is a, a fine hospital. Many people go there. It's frankly more centrally located in the Bronx. Well, what, all right, so they moved. They decided they either were downsizing for whatever the reason was, but they moved the services there. Why, why, the, why the uproar? Why the concern? Why do you still believe that you ought to uh, undo what has been done? You don't rob Peter to pay Paul. The problem is that North Central Bronx, the Northwest Corridor, that community there is going to be left with no labor and delivery services, maternal care services. And the next door hospital, which they, is Montefiore, right. does not provide that. They don't provide those services. No, they don't. But there was only, as I understood and I read some of the numbers, even some of the ones that you circulated, it was only 10% of the, the uh, births in the, in the Bronx, uh, you know, given the whole spectrum of where births take place. You know, if you're going to close one, and playing devil's advocate here, why not close one that, that, that doesn't provide as, as many births and as many services or at least the, the numbers that the other ones do? The problem with that is that there were about 1,400 births. We're thinking there was closer to 1,800. So there's an, a discrepancy. 1,800 a year. Yeah. We think there's a discrepancy in the numbers from what HAC is saying, 1,400 okay. versus what we believe. That's one thing. Okay. But that's besides the fact. Yeah, 1,800 is really, you know, three a day, mm -hmm. three, three and a half a day, three a day. The fact is that Jacoby is not close to North Central Bronx. It is a f more than a 45-minute trip over to Jacoby. And the fact is that community is, is slightly different in terms of geographically, in terms of demographics, and so you need mm -hmm. to provide care there that's necessary. And so we're fine with ensuring patient safety at Jacoby. Obviously, we want to work with 
them to ensure that. Right. But the fact is, North Central Bronx had a strong Evelyn based midwifery program that pretty could have been replicated at Jacoby. So and, you're saying why close one to uh, mm -hmm. have the other? Why not just I improve and expand the services, which is what I mentioned at the top of the show. So, um, um, Ms. Burkhart, what, what's your point of view? Is this a bad thing, and why? why well, is it I a think bad the thing? real crit one of the other critical issues. Why now? You know, the Affordable Care Act is starting to come down the pike. People are enrolling in it. By January 1, the 40s... Assuming that the government gets over the glitches that they've had. They'll that's fix a, that's it. Come on. Issue. Come on, Gary. Yeah. They'll fix it. Uh, bottom line is, as of January 1, there will be, some, you know, f the 47% of the population that was uninsured, they won't all be insured, but a heck of a lot of them will be. And then we will be seeing more women who would have avoided health care before labor and birth because they were afraid to put their heads up. They didn't have access to the services. Right. So you're going to put up, number one, the prenatal care visits will go up higher. Um, people will then come into the hospital better. But again, will we have enough enough services available to absorb the quantity of people that will come in for health care come January 1? And in a place where they live rather than a place where they have to be transported to. So you basically didn't really answer the question of why now. You're saying, in essence, you're really asking the question. I thought oh, you were I am. No, I don't have the answer because it just seems to me, a t you know, timing is everything in life. So, so and that they chose yeah. now to close critical maternity care services in an area like the Bronx mm -hmm. with ACA coming down the pike is beyond my comprehension. What, what do you think is the result? I mean, it's August now, it's October. What do you think the uh, result is going to be? What, what, what's the, the fallout here? Oh, I think there's going to be a huge press for pre prenatal care services. Or uh, they won't get... Or, they, or the, the press will be such there won't be an appointment for until two months down the pike when somebody calls in to get one. I, there's going to be a dearth of so adequate then a services. Two-month pregnancy is not seen till the fourth month. That's for correct. You, you That's wanted, correct. I, I saw you motion there. I, I, I totally agree. I think we can speculate reasons, and, and HAC has spoken to many of our community advocates and ourselves, saying that it's about a patient safety issue, mm -hmm. and we can and they can continue doing that. The fact is that we will keep saying it, and the unions have said it. It's was it preventable a year ago? How does Jacoby from 2011 get a patient safety award, nationwide patient safety award, and then go two years later now with issues of patient safety? Right. We're, we're going to go to the phones. I want to ask you kind of an economics uh, question here. Uh, in, in terms of um, if, if they were to come to you, if they said, okay, you're seated around the table and you're going to be with us uh, in, in this discussion, how could you provide the care at Jacoby or, uh, you know, do whatever you needed to do and streamline the program and either still save money or not spend more money. Can it be done, or do you really need an expansion of the program? I, from a clinical perspective, I would say we don't really know what the problems are. Right. You know, they may, there are innuendos about things. There were two maternal deaths at Jacoby. They, there, there are bits and pieces out there with no true underpinning information. Who's going to have that dialogue? <laughs> Maybe we got to have it further well, on this show. Well, I don't the know. issue is community health planning. If you really want to provide a real comprehensive plan, you're going to need the unions and the advocates and the community to sit together and decide and discuss how to look at these and issues. And basically answer the question that I just asked. But I right. would insert the providers. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, I mean, the community is a critical the element well, that the, is, the, the, but the, not just does staff. Does the AMA and, and uh, doctors want to be part of this? Are they upset well, about Well, certainly the well? midwives that are associated with Health and uh, Hospital Corp, not just necessarily in the Bronx, because there mm -hmm. are many seasoned and experienced mm -hmm. midwives throughout the system. So there is expertise out there, including the obstetricians. But I don't know how much say they had in it. I know There's the a pattern. The HAC none. has done this before. They did this at Bellevue. Uh, well, yeah, we'll get should, back yeah. and we'll ask you about they that. Let's go to the telephone. Our good friend uh, Larry Siler, who does uh, special people's special issues at um, uh, How are you doing, guys? How are you doing, guys? Um, Larry, nice to have you on. Uh, uh, let I'm me just uh, mention that people can see. And, um, oh. my, okay, my thing is St. Vincent's and a bunch of these hospitals, including SUNY Downstate, um, closed or is threatened to close, I mean, I don't see why people are closing uh, the maternity. Whoops, getting feedback there. I, I couldn't hear what Larry was saying. I'm Somebody sorry. Tell me what um, he was saying. Hello, you don't hello, see why. There. I, I really hello? couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't hear what you were saying, Larry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, quick. Uh, my, okay, my point being is this. 
all these hospitals that are, are closing or have closed in the past, have closed in the past, including St. Vincent's and SUNY Downstate. Okay. Okay. Uh, my point is, why are you guys closing that maternity ward when those people need it? Right. So other countries, right. like Asia, Asia, and other countries have free health care. Why are we closing services that we need? That's my point. Got it. Larry, thank you very much for expressing concern. I'm, I'm assuming you folks uh, certainly agree with what he said wholeheartedly. I mean, it, the issue is very complicated, but just to bore it down the facts of these hospital mm -hmm. closings over years, it's always been, once again, how decisions are being made by people who are not representative of these communities, who don't understand what's going on in terms of access and quality of care in these communities. Right. And so they easily can make these decisions. It's people making decisions downtown mm -hmm. for people in the Bronx. Where have I heard that before? And we have a laissez-faire State Department of Health who rubber stamps right. every closing. Um, Jane tells me we have Dr. Frank Prosha, who is with SEIU and a part of this process. So, uh, Dr. Prosha, thank you for calling in. And uh, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what your background is and then also what your concern is here. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Frank Prosha. I'm the executive director of Doctors Council SBI. Right. We represent the doctors in HAC, including the doctors at Jacoby and North Central Bronx Hospital. Uh, we have brought multiple issues that are to HAC, both at Jacoby and North Central Bronx, but HAC has not adequately addressed these issues. They include the retention and the recruitment of new senior experience doctors. They've had a revolving door of chairpersons. There's short staffing, doctors are overworked. It appears that HHC is creating a climate that there's going to be a problem, and therefore they use that as an excuse to cut services. And the community and the staff and the patients in North Central Bronx is concerned that this is a preview of a closing of North Central Bronx. Uh, l let me ask you this. Why do you think that they did this? You think that they did this, and this is what uh, some of your colleagues, um, uh, you know, uh, were suggested. You think that they did this because the plan ultimately is to close NCB? That is a very good, that is a good, very good explanation for this, because they're not, com they're not coming up with any other plan for a reopening of NCB. Mm -hmm. North Central Bronx, the Northwest community of the Bronx, is in dire need of OBGYN, labor and delivery, and NICU services. And one community is not more important than another. Mm -hmm. And at the tail end of the Bloomberg administration, this may be the final closure of a hospital. And that would be a shame. And you, and you think this is uh, economically driven, so that they simply can close it and then have more, more uh, resources to spread around for other um, hospitals, Jacoby or wherever? Well, just look at what they're doing in HHC. Mm -hmm. What Giuliani couldn't do by privatizing the hospital, this administration has slowly been subletting it to you know, private contractors. Mm -hmm. you know, the dialysis services and the HHC facilities now go out to a private contractor. Laundry services go out to a private contractor. They're, sub they're privatizing a city hospital system without calling it selling them out. Right. Uh, do you, in your mind, do you have timing, or do you think it'll happen before uh, Mayor Bloomberg leaves office? I, that, I, that I cannot say, okay. because there's no transparency here. HHC <laughs> is not talking with any of the community groups. They're not talking with the elected officials. They're not talking with the labor unions. They're not talking with the staff. They're just doing things behind, Got it. You know, behind the scenes. Dr. Prosha, thank you for uh, being a doctor in the Bronx. We appreciate it. Thank you, and thanks for calling in tonight. We have uh, Sangra from the Northeast Bronx. Now, I think Jane had said she was a nurse or something. So uh, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Hi, do we have Sangra? Yes, I'm okay, here. Okay, go ahead. I, yes, I'm one of the nurses who worked there in North Central Bronx in the NICU. And I was very disappointed when it was closed, having the interest of the patients at heart, the community, because there is not a direct mode of transportation from that area to the Jacoby Hospital. Mm -hmm. So therefore, these people are at risk during pregnancy and for prenatal care with the cost of 
more than one um, a double series zone, etc., for these people to travel, and, especially when their babies are in the NICU. And let, let me ask you, what do you think will happen? Let's just say a, 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 a young person, and, and unfortunately in many cases it's, it is a teenage pregnancy, a 17-year-old or even younger or an 18-year-old goes or, or, you know, seeks for care and they say, well, you have to go to Jacoby. You think they won't get on the bus or the, the two fare, uh, or, well, it's not really two fares anymore. You can usually get a transfer. But you think they won't get on the bus and, and get it taken care of? They probably will try, but I think it's very difficult. Yeah, it's probably not going to encourage it. It probably will discourage getting the care. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, Sangra, thank you so much uh, for uh, calling in. We appreciate you. Um, let, let's, uh, you know, Anthony, I, I want to ask you a little bit about um, kind of a broader picture and, and something that is in your literature, and that's this idea of a child health initiative, um, which kind of takes this issue and broadens it. You've been talking about the need for community input into health care, and, and I know your organization did a pretty exhaustive study. Talk to me about the Child Health Initiative, how it might interplay with some of these issues. Several years ago, uh, we wanted to celebrate what they call the Child Health Clinics um, that were going to be 100 years old. These are the original clinics that did the immunization um, and so on. And in terms of doing that, we thought a better way of to work that is try to build some community coalitions in every borough, work with community-based organizations to start interviewing, surveying, focus groups with community members to discuss what it means to get access to care around children, mm -hmm. um, what it means quality of care. Well, you know, we don't have a ton of time. Do you think that uh, some of the th your findings are getting out there, or is it still a struggle to communicate these things? It's always a struggle to communicate them. I think uh, what happens is the issue of capacity many times. You know, you mm -hmm. do a good study and you try to, try to keep it alive. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is that we do it to building coalitions and taking those issues that are going on already in communities and hide, hiding them by talking about the facts. Right. Um, we're almost out of time. Uh, Pat Burkhart, um, do you think this effort, part of even the dialogue on the show, will overturn a decision or do you think you're just putting information out there for the future? Well, I think we have to start somewhere and I think we need to work as hard as we can to have adequate, convenient health care, qualitative health care services for mothers and babies in the Northwest Bronx. So if that means getting NCB reopened, then you're all for it. We're going to work on it. Uh, Pat Burkhart, uh, thank you so much from the uh, uh, New York State Association of Midwives and uh, also Anthony Feliciano from the uh, Commission on the Public's Health System. Thank you. Jane has put up your information for folks who want to contact you or find out more. We appreciate your time tonight. If you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then you email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com. And uh, you can uh, post them on our Facebook page, and we'll read them on the air during a future edition of our program. You can become a fan of Bronx Talk on Facebook. You can see our archives at bronxnet.com. Dot org, the right-hand navigation bar. You click Bronx Talk right down there. Next week, we will do, believe it or not, our 900th program. It's kind of hard to believe, but uh, we will uh, celebrate by bringing on an old friend, artist Danny Haben, who painted the beautiful uh, backdrop and mural that we have on our show. He'll be here to show uh, new Bronx paintings and talk about his new Bronx Net TV show. So that'll be great, and uh, thanks so much to producer Jane Floro, director Shirley Arietta, studio coordinator Dina Valentine, and the cast of thousands. Good night.